Let's explore a persistent element of standardized schooling that is present in most schools and might have a detrimental effect in learners' well-being, motivation, and meaningful learning. Exams. Eva was one of my classmates at university. We also worked together in a genetics research lab. In fact, she was fascinated by it to the point that today Eva holds a PhD in this field. However, when we got an exam, even though the exam was about genetics, she got, re she got really anxious. I remember that in one occasion she got to the point of a panic attack and she couldn't show up for the test. So far we have talked about the impact of trauma and trauma-aware education in this series of videos about trauma in education triggered by the loss of our home in a fire. But what if your school or learning center was the source of trauma? Exams, bullying, public shaming, isolation, the number of situations that can result in children and or youth traumatic experiences in schools are really numerous. Just think about your own experience when you were a child. I can certainly remember vividly several occasions that still make me feel really uncomfortable. Exams can generate high level of stress, anxiety, and in some cases, trauma. The pressure to obtain good marks can lead to distorted perception on the personal value and even leading to mental health problems. And what can we do as educators? Are exams the only way? Let me share with you the difference between mastery and performance goals and how that can inf impact the way that you look at exams. When we pursue mastery goals, we aspire to improve personally developing our own skills and knowledge. Whereas when we pursue performance goals, the desire is to appear competent or outperform others. In this case, the motivation does not come from wanting to improve oneself and grow, but from the intention to, of appearing competent or avoiding appearing incompetent. There might be people that work towards performance goals to avoid feeling embarrassed or judged as a failure, while there might be other people who seek to appear more capable than others or to be judged in a socially positive way or feeling intelligent. In general, it seems that mastery goals, that is, those that we set ourselves to grow and not to compete with others or to avoid feeling inferior, favor intrinsic motivation and perseverance. On the contrary, if we focus on performance goals based on reaching predefined standards, competition and comparison among students, we encourage them to memorize bits of information quickly to pass the test. This information is stored in short-term memory, but is not converted into deep and meaningful learning. This can also lead learners to avoid tasks that they perceive as difficult or challenging, to avoid feeling weak or, and to protect, in fact, their self-esteem. In addition, when um, they make a mistake, they're more likely to associate it with their lack of ability rather than part of the learning process. And this leads us to having a fix rather than a growth mindset. All this research makes quite evident the detrimental effect of a standardized tests can have on a student's motivation, self-esteem and meaningful learning, as it's all about external goals rather than individual goals and performance rather than mastery objectives. This is why many learning centers are starting to use other practices such as portfolios. Portfolios are a summary of projects, activities and learnings that children have developed along their times in the, in the school or learning center. A kind of collection of the steps that they have taken in their learning process and that can provide a more vivid example of what they have actually learned rather than a number in an exam. As educators, we can influence the type of goals that students aspire to. And if it's evident to them that personal goals focus on personal improvement are valued, children will use these types of, of, of objectives. This will support deep learning and their self-esteem. Moreover, these type of goals are associated with a decrease of disruptive behaviors in the classroom and an improvement of academic achievements. And it contributes to the perception of a safe learning environment. Now that you have this information, what are you going to do differently? Give it a try to master goals and using portfolios and let us know how it goes.